the real world. Let's dive deep into the issues that affect our communities, revealing the untold stories and giving you a voice. No sensationalism, no bias, just raw, unadulterated truth. I am committed to delivering news without compromise. Hard facts as we know them, when we know them, and how they affect you. Every Monday through to Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. This will be your most authentic news experience starting now on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Hello, Lagos. Uh, seven minutes gone past the uh, three o'clock hour. Welcoming you to Hard Facts. It will be, as I always say, your most authentic news experience. And it's coming to you nowhere else but from the nation's number one talk news and sports radio station, 99.3 Nigeria Info. Um, I know a lot of you were enjoying yourselves yesterday. And I did say, um, from a place of bias... That you're all going to be back to the suffering and the traffic. Are you back? <laughs> At least I had a free flow. Um, I was able to get, get to work and back without any wahala. Um, so, yeah. But how was your holiday? I hope you enjoyed it. It was a long one for those of you who had it. For those of us that we categorize as essential service, we love our jobs. Just I would like a little holiday every now and again. <laughs> Why well, not beefing you? Welcome back. And I hope that you do not forget the reason for the season. I always say that. So while you're enjoying and passing away, someone gave his life for you. And I hope you never forget it and take it for granted. My name is Mary Ann O'Connor. And of course, we're live. Facebook.com forward slash Nigeria Info FM. We're also live on YouTube, Nigeria Info 99.3. And you can join the conversation on WhatsApp. If you're listening to us from outside of the country, we're also on Skype or Nigeria Info FM. And these are the big three stories for today. This is the big three. The big three. On Hard Facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. All right, let's look at the big stories for today. Let's start from uh, electricity. Uh, well, yeah, apparently um, electricity tariff hike is imminent as federal government has raised domestic base gas price for power firms. I'll give you some background. The Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority um, says the new price of natural gas and uh, power generation companies um, is now $2.42 um cents per metric ton um well per, per metric million british thermal units i beg your pardon now the agency um announced this um, new domestic base price and wholesale prices of natural gas for 2024 in a statement on monday uh, the domestic base price for minimum amount at which natural gas can be sold to the domestic market the review which is a raise from the previous 2.18 dollars um, could lead to a tariff hike as Nigeria generates 70% of its electricity from power plants that are powered by gas. And my big question today, Lagos, to all of you, if you've had light for a bit, well, congratulations. If you've not seen light in a, in a bit, I sympathize with you. But in the midst of the cost of living crisis that we found ourselves in, are we able or are we going to be able to afford it? How can we even afford it? Have you bought bread lately? Do you know how much it costs? The loaf of bread goes for about 1,900 now. <laughs> I'm laughing because I love bread. Um, and every time I go into a supermarket to get one, I'm just like, really? Seriously, really? Bread used to be 300 now. I'm like, really? I, ch I can't believe it. And now, we're paying for light that we've not seen. I'm going to remind you guys, you remember how much government is subsidizing electricity for? Between January and February this year alone, they've subsidized it with two point something billion in two months. And hey, we left the first part of the year. We're now in the second part of the year, which starts here in April. God knows how much it is now, but they want to increase yet again the tariff. How certain are we that we can actually be able to afford to pay if there is a tariff hike okay let's move away from that um, more stories to come um 
Another big story here. Third mainland bridge repairs cost federal government over 15.6 billion naira in six years. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Hold on. Hold your horses. Well, experts are saying that um, routine repairs due to non-adherence to basic maintenance schedule has, you know, ended up making the money more than it should be on a normal day. So the increase is... Um, is proportionate to the fact that we're not doing the necessary and our maintenance um you know culture in this country is almost zero so yeah the reason why we're where we are according to experts is because there's no there's non adherence to basic maintenance schedule we do it at at any point but don't forget these monies are appropriated for every single year in our budget now they're also saying these experts that further delay on these maintenances for the third mainland and other places could cost six trillion naira. <laughs> yes. But let me tell you, the routine repair of the third mainland bridge infrastructure has cost the federal government at least 15.6 billion naira in the last six years. It could have been less. But coupled with the rounds of discomfort for users who depend on critical facilities to use it daily. I mean, we passed through the third mainland and you, you know the wahala that you had to go through. Um, using a cold bridge and other routes. Now, the incessant repairs and downtime were blamed on the inability of the federal government to, con to uh, and concern Nigerians, I beg your pardon, uh, to keep the rehabilitation schedule of the 34-year-old infrastructure. Current repairs, according to the Guardian newspaper, started last year. The federal government, after the federal government um, had approved the total sum of 6.28 billion naira for surface maintenance. The 24 months repair covered 11.8 kilometers, including interchanges, ramps, and critical links. Now, the Lagos State Government's Public Works Corporation embarked on the repairs of the functional structure of the bridge, such as the underwater piles, while the federal government took the surface maintenance to treat potholes and restore missing guardrails. It can also be recalled that in 2018, the government approved 18.87 billion naira for renovation, which was contracted to Borini. Porino or Prono, and I think it's an Italian, um, you know, construction company. They actually constructed the bridge. Now, the Guardian newspaper has also guarded that the recurring um, repairs were follow-up to several reports carried out on the bridge by firms that recommended strict maintenance of the structure. So the big question is, what is this explanation they're giving us? They're saying that it's due to the fact that we're not following the structure. Who's we? The government, the state, the federal, or is it that the monies were not approved on time? Because what we're reading is that monies were approved. So what was stopping the shuttle maintenance? It can't be us because if we want to be safe on that bridge, we also can afford to take other. I mean, yes, it will be grueling for some of us, but then it's better than dying on the bridge. But is this good enough explanation anyway? I don't know. Or is this an excuse? for so much money, yet very little work being done. Finally, um, I want to talk about one last story, and then, of course, I will have my guests joining me from Ondo State because we want to talk about what's happening in Ondo State. Um, but quickly, um, let's look at this story about the EFCC. The EFCC is telling us uh, that um, they're going to go after mega looters. Yes, the EFCC boss was quoted to say that they're going after mega looters. And I'm asking myself, will the EFCC not only bark, are they willing to bite? Should we be hoping, should we hold our hope, or should we just go about our businesses and not bother because this might just be another media propaganda? But let's quickly go to Ondo State before I open up the phone lines, Lagos, and then you can be part of the conversation. Now, Ondo State, of course, is gearing up for its... Um, governorship elections knowing uh, after the uh, passing of um, uh, Akiti, of course um, the deputy governor has now um, been confirmed as the governor but of course it's time for him to go to the polls and run for the ticket as governor but then we also know that there are several people who have decided that they will throw their hat in the ring also members of his own political party and they all uh, went to uh, Abuja to get Mr. President's uh, endorsement. Who do you think the president is going to endorse? Well, joining me via Zoom is um, Olufemi Lawson. He is um, a very good friend of mine and, of course, he's from Ondo State. He's also 
um, from civil society. It's good to have you join us, uh, Mr. Lawson. Um, great conversation <coughs> we're about to have about your state. Good afternoon, Mayor. Great. Um, I know that you, you just got in from Lagos. But quickly paint a picture to me. Who are the biggest um, frontliners um, for this revered Guba seat? I mean, aside from the governor, I know that there's a senator um, who was very close to Akati and his wife, who's also, um, you know, thrown his heart into the ring. How easy uh, a contest is this going to be for Aida Tiwa? I thank you, Mayor, for having me. The race, just like you just spoke about, is not going to be just a walkover for Governor Aida Tiwa, but uh, just a seven senator. <clears throat> There's also a seven member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Jimmy Odumayo, that is also a former House of Representative member, Maya Waki Fulari, you know, there are political heavyweights like Chief, Chief Olushalaoki, you know, who was a candidate at some point, and some other political heavyweights in this race. But I want to say that Governor Aida Tiwa is at advantage, not only because he has gotten the endorsement of President Bola Tinubu, who is the leader of their party, or some other, you know, national leaders of the party, but rather on the basis of the support he currently enjoys on the ground in Ondo State. Mm -hmm. As I speak with you, key stakeholders within the party in Ondo State, lead, you know, leaders of the party across the local government, leaders of the party, members of the party across the various polling wards, electoral wards in the state, have thrown their weight you know, behind the incumbent governor, Lucky Aida. So that has given him an edge above other aspirants who are in this race, you know, for the APC ticket. Remember, of course, some other political parties are also going to be part of the race for the for who becomes the next governor of the uh, state after the November 2024 20, election. You and I have had conversations uh, back to back uh, just before the passing of the previous governor and and the the infighting that we saw the the, ha the state house of assembly trying to constantly impeach the deputy governor. So there is no love lost, of course, within the APC in Ondo State. Again, whether Mr. President endorses him or not. What is the level of acceptability of the deputy governor within his party, or rather the governor now, I beg your pardon, within his party and the big wigs who I have seen running against him for that same ticket? Well, yeah, I think one thing that is working for him as to speak is the level of acceptability that he has uh, been enjoying from cross-section of stakeholders of the party. Just like you said, you know, the same as of assembly which attempted to impeach, you know, him, while he was the deputy governor, you know, a move that was resisted by a lot of us, including a lot of people of Ondo State. Today, the majority of them have thrown their weight behind the governor just about a few days ago. 18 members of the assembly, you know, Ondo State Assembly has 26 members. 18 members of the assembly openly endorsed the governor as their candidate for the APC, you know, primaries. Only a few days ago, they were also in Abuja you know, to meet with the national leadership of the party to pass a vote of confidence in their belief that Governor Edatiwa is the only candidate that the party can sponsor to ensure a, a smooth victory for the party during the governorship election. So fundamentally, it is very clear that he's enjoying massive support from not only leaders of the party. Of course, you know, politicians will always be divided by ambition. But the truth is that those who matters, the who is who, Especially when you talk about party as you know, party stakeholders at what level, at the, when you talk of appointees, the members of the House of Assembly, including some members of the National Assembly, are not throwing their weight behind the governor and they're giving him a massive support. That is enough to let us know that he may, of course, without any much stress, pick the ticket of you. Well, I mean, APC. aside from the fact that the power of the incumbents, uh, the incumbent, I beg your pardon, um, you know, exists. Uh, should we hold our breath in terms of if there might be some drama on the times, knowing that Undo stage is never ever bereft of drama? Well, it, it, course, the primary may end up being dramatic, you know, just like you are predicting. But the truth is that a, a winner will emerge, and the winner, as it is today, except the dynamics change tomorrow morning, the winner will be the governor because he's very positioned now to win the ticket of the party from all indications on the ground here. 
hopefully um, on the day of the um, primaries, we will have you to um, speak to us on that day. Hopefully you will be there uh, to let us know what Definitely. exactly is happening on the ground in Akure. Definitely. Well, thank you very much. Um, Olufemi Lawson is, um, of course, an indigent of Ondo State. Um, he's joining us live from Akure and he's a civil society um, official. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Maria. All right, thank you. Well, Lagos, it's time for you to join the conversation and be part of the big stories for today. I'd like to hear from you. Are you talking about the power situation? Are you, will you, can we, are we all able uh, to pay if there is a rise in the price of um, electricity already? We're paying so much and we're getting little. Can you afford it? And, of course, we're looking at the third mainland bridge. They're giving us excuses that, uh, well, we've spent so much money because you guys, you're not sticking to schedule. <laughs> and, of course, um, <laughs> yeah, the um, EFCC is reading the riot act to us yet again, saying that they're going after mega looters. Who are these mega looters? And if they're barking this loud, can they bite? Zero two zero one four six five seven one nine zero. Let's take your thoughts. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Sorry about that. Do call me back if that was you. Hello, welcome to Hard Facts. Oh, dear. So sorry. Call me back. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Hello, good afternoon, Mary Anna Pinopino. Hey, Pinopino Estate. Mm, let's go. We've got one minute, quickly. All right, let me fire. Um, the last interview you just had, um, your guest said, uh, probably the governor is going to win the election. So my question to him is, on what parameter? Because I I knew the, oh, I know the, the governor just took out of office a few weeks back. And I never, I've not seen most of the works he has done that will make people vote for him. He has not been as popular as his predecessor. If only not for the normal way, those in power who use the set apparatus to influence the voters and do whatever they want to do. Mm. If not for that, I don't know the reason why he will, so, he will be so quick to say that the governor Ayatiwa will clinch the seat of um, uh, uh, governorship. Or but he's election. already sat there. He's already the governor. It's very difficult to, you know, like I said, the power of the incumbent is there. But uh, I mean, also, we can't also um, ignore the fact that there's been a lot of infighting while he was and deputy governor. So, I mean, yeah, fingers crossed. That's what I'm saying. Fingers it's crossed. not for the brute and crude way they handle things based on, so to say, power of incumbency. I don't really see the influence that will make him, the popularity that will make him get the seat. Okay. Then on the, on the no, 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 we've got to go. We've got to go. It's time, it's time for us to go for a break. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Um, We've got to go on a break, Lagos. When we come back, of course, uh, we still have more to take on your thoughts and your comments. It's still the big three. Hard facts. My name is Mary Anna Cole. Yes, yes, Lagos. The parameters have not changed. The game has not changed at all. One play is still giving out money to the tune of 150,000 naira daily. All you have had to do, all you still have to do, is go to www.oneplay.ng or dial the code star three four seven star eight eight zero star three hash from your phone with as little as 500 naira. And in a few seconds, your ticket will be in the drawers, qualifying you as one of the people who could win money for the day now the more you play the better your chances of winning every day on the morning crossfire what's up lagos and game on all on weekdays and of course football frenzy on weekends you can be a winner every day that is not all on fridays there will be a 500,000 naira jackpot can you beat that ladies and gentlemen playing during the week qualifies you to be in the weekly jackpot now your chances of winning are pretty much the same whether you play on www.oneplay.ng or dial star 347 star 880 star 3 hash remember to play responsibly and make sure that you're above the age of 18 while playing one play is a registered trademark under lasher trading services limited licensed by the lagos state lotteries and gaming commission this is an infomercial Welcome, Welcome back, back to Hard Facts. This is Hard Facts. 
Millions of listeners trust us on Hatchback. Whether it's politics, social issues, controversies, and trending stories, you know we're credible and objective. It, it, it's Hard Facts with Miriam Okun on 99.3 Nigeria Info. All right, the numbers for you to call 0201-465-7190. Still the big three, 99.3 Nigeria Info. I just spoke with the civil ser- uh, civil society organization um, uh, official um, in Ondo State, of course, um, as the state gets prepared for uh, the primaries for the APC specifically. Of course, all the parties are going to have their own primaries in, in preparation for the elections. Uh, But um, for Ondo State, the governor is in the running, obviously, and he just recently took an oath of office um, because his predecessor passed on. And and we all know the travails and the wahala, the the infighting and the many times that he was tried to be they tried to impeach him. Uh, The fact that they seemingly there are people, those who are seemingly powerful, who did not necessarily want him to succeed the governor. But unfortunately, for those people, he is now the governor and, of course, in the running for this office for another term. And um, the question is, will affliction rise a second time? Um, is there going to be a lot of drama um, come um, next week in Ondo State? And moving away from that, the government uh, uh, has told us that there will be, might be a, t- a hike in the base price for um you know electricity are you already not paying too much or maybe you're just paying normal but then you're not even getting the service again let me not speak for you how much light do you get and if you would for example so i saw a tweet and someone said if you were told to pay fifteen thousand naira a month for light but then you get to have at least 12 hours of light would you pay for it and i'm thinking why wouldn't i if I'm going to have 24 hours of light and I'm told to pay a fee and I'm certain that I'm going to have light, why won't I pay for it? But the reverse is the case in this, t- in, in this part of the world because make it make sense. We're giving other people light and they have 24 hours light, but we don't. And then it's always one story after the other. So if they increase this price now, are we going to have 24 hours light or is it a pay full? <laughs> anyway, join the conversation. 0201-465-7190. Hello, welcome to Hard Facts. Action lady. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can I talk about the Todd Milan Bridge? Yes, please. Yeah, good one. 2018, the triple minister then closed that bridge for some months. 2019, the same thing. And all this one with billions. So, but this super minister that is there today, just three months, Miriam. Even when they, they want to take off, I say, ah, this time you give, can you finish this job? And the guy meet up. How many billion? Compared to the other one that spent, how many, how much did he say they spent for six years? Um, let me look at it again. I think two, um, 12, if not 16. Hold on, let me get it right. 15.6 billion naira. <laughs> and this is the time they do a major job because the other guy was doing just part, 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 part. But this one from Iyano Uru into Adeniji here, both sides of the road. Hmm. Completed within three months. And quick one, action lady. They should not allow any heavy duty truck to ply that road again. So, where, where, where should they pass? No, no, no. There's a ton. I think 80 something tons or 60 something should not ply that bridge. Anything above 80. Yeah, but what's the alternative? No, they go through Ikorodu Road. I see tankers pass there, trailer full loaded with uh, whatever. And those boys that used to carry Baku bags. Who's, 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 who's going to implement it? Well, you know, Nigeria now, the system doesn't work. We have powerful men. Like I was saying, for insecurity, those uh, boys that used to carry Baku bag, I don't know whether you witness them at times. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., you see them. They have tools in that bag where they use to attack people. And the towing vehicle guy is there too. They don't supposed to be on that bridge. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., doing what? There's a chemical they use 
that destroy those stars. Those cool stars, I mean, they pour that in and eat well, the Well, in case you're not up to speed, CCTV cameras are going to be on that bridge. So all of that's going to be, um, you know, addressed, I'm guessing. For Nigeria? Well, that's what that's what the minister told people, us. The same people who man this thing will know how to manipulate the whole thing. Well, let's hope not. Work. Let's let's just uh, let's just hope. Boys, not. I don't want to see them on that bridge anymore. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you, actually. Thank you, Mr. Christian, for calling. Christian, another Christian is calling us from Ijibu. Hello, Christian. Good afternoon, Erian. Hi. How are you? <laughs> it's time to us another day. Mm. Yeah, Virginia Christian, are calling from Ijibu. Mm -hmm. I want to talk on this. Uh, uh, Bridge, mm -hmm. Third Mainland Bridge. Yeah. To me, I feel this Third Mainland Bridge is another avenue to channel money out into private uh, pockets. So, how? Honestly speaking, because I've known how many times that Third Mainland Bridge has been repaired. Billions, 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 billions. When this thing starts, it starts gradually, like the asphalt uh, resurfacing. When it starts filling up. It starts gradually. And nothing will be done immediately. They will leave it to deteriorate to an extent. They will start using billions. billions. This present government, if you ask them now to build that bridge anew, I believe the whole budget for Nigeria in a year won't be enough to build that bridge. <laughs> Going with the amount they are using now, they say that they are using to repair the third mainland bridge built by the military it's 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 over six years. It's not in one. It's not in one year. It's over six years. So it's over been ongoing. Yes. So what they mean now is that this one they, that where well, they don't do now, then go leave and they go spoil it again before they will come bring another money. Come do again. Let's the hope not. Ah. <laughs> My sister, is it that top mainland bridge? Don't become another uh, uh, cash cow. Oof. I'll be waiting on the column. Shineka. Cash cow. Honestly speaking, mm. politicians and and contractors are just enriching themselves through that. Bridge, okay. They said they are going to build the fourth one. Let them build the fourth one. Let's see how much they used to build the fourth one. Okay. All right. Thank you, Engineer Chris, for calling. Pastor Ladik Boy is calling us from Urile Gomu. Uh, sorry, Gomu, precisely. Okay. Um, Marian, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Afternoon. I'm not going to say that thing because I, I don't I'm even have your time. Oga, be talking. I don't have your Please. time. Uh -huh. Now, I want to thank God for this present minister who has come to accomplish this. I appreciate him. Which minister? Umahi. Okay. Is it Umahi for this okay. third Milan bridge. Okay. Thank God, because there was time we have a minister who is even from this state. He could not accomplish that feat, despite all the billions. That is, by the way, I want to talk about power holding. Maria, hmm? even with that light, we are already paying. So let them even try us with enough light. They will see that people will comply. You see, let me tell you the truth. The reason why... Why should they try us? Why can't they just give us light? Simple. Why do, should they try... Uh, what I is it? I understand. Because the why I'm saying they should try us with it is because even at darkness, people are still paying. People, you see, it is few that are defaulting. People are still paying. Go and check. People, they are raking in millions. Every month, with the with the darkness I'm giving to us, so let them release the light. Okay. They will see that people will be willing. All right. To pay. Okay. It's so painful. All right. Power holding. Thank release you. the light. Release the light. Come on. Release it. <laughs> release it. <laughs> Prince is calling us from my chat. Oh, I'm so sorry, Prince. Can you call us back? Don't forget, we're live. Facebook.com forward slash Nigeria Info FM. We're live on YouTube, Nigeria Info 99.3. Post your comments on our live stream. I can see a lot of you watching. Uh, if you have comments on our big stories for today and on Twitter, use the hashtag hard facts. That way I can tell that this particular tweet is for me and not for anybody else. OK, so go ahead. And post your comments on um, Twitter, which is X, of course. And on WhatsApp, I want to come there quickly and read your messages. And then I'll go back to the phone lines. Um, for those of you who do not know what the WhatsApp number is, let me do you one uh, big favor by giving you the numbers. It's 08095975805. That's 08095975805. Send me a message. Don't call me. Send me a message, all right? Let me go to your messages now. Someone says... Um, Marianne, increasing electricity tariff is improper. Therefore, the price of natural gas should come down to avert the ripple effect on electricity consumers. John Inikota Villa. Okay, John. 
Um, EFCC should know that the delay may bring. They should know that delay may bring who no man in the case. EFCC should bark and bite also. I hope they're not toothless bulldogs. Concerning the economy, government should do everything possible to elevate the sufferings of the masses. This inflation is killing. Olusha Gajai, thank you. Um, this one says, good afternoon, Marianne. In respect to power bills, they can charge whatever they like, but when it comes to when it becomes unbearable, they can take their meter away while we seek a second opinion. Okay, what, what's that going to be? Energy from the sun? Uh, yeah, uh, we're going to get inverters. Anyway, um, he's saying that as for the third mainland bridge, I can bet my bottom Naira that if it's construction, if it's construction started under these looters, there would be no third mainland bridge. Finally, EFCC is just blowing hot. Before you know it, its chairman will get into the news for the wrong reasons. Chike from Akuti. Why? Why do you have so little faith in the EFCC? Why do you not have great faith in the EFCC? What's, what's it, what is it <laughs> that's making you say that, you know, the boss... I mean, one time the boss, you know, ended up in the news. But, I mean, does that mean that the whole crop of them you know the whole efcc is dirty does that mean i mean i'm just saying anyway um this one says um uh, why do you guys send so such a long message and this message is obviously not even for me man because like what's this sorry i can't read it this one says um the mega losers are in the current government at the center and th and in the APC as a party. The EFCC should have carried out its constitutional assignment, constitutional assignment, I beg your pardon, without making public statements about it. You don't tell a thief that you're coming for him. It's obvious that the real looters are in the executive, legislature, judiciary and other agencies of government. And and they will not be touched with the method of commissioning a uh, commission. Uh, yeah. Uh, OK, thank you. Um, this one says, how's the government elevating suffering of the people by increasing the price of domestic gas or uh, electricity? Should this palliative continue forever? Please, they should do the right thing for once. Momo from Adamo. <laughs> Not be small domestic gas. All right. This one says, um, increment in electricity fare shouldn't be shouldn't come along with the increase in gas price for distribution companies. The government should regulate these discos, huge annual profits to the benefit of citizens, not the discos. They still make profits from us with the new gas price without overcharging us. Abe sent us that message. Thank you, Abe. Um, this one says, Marianne, take it or leave it. Third Milan Bridge is now a cash cow. Okay. Um, and someone is sending me a voice note. I should do what's now with these voice notes. Okay. Back to the phone lines, Lagos. 0201-465-7190. Hello. Sorry about that. Do call me back. 0201-465-7190. 0201-465-7190. If you are uh, listening to us from outside of the country via our mobile app, call us on Skype or Nigeria Info FM. I'd love to hear from you. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Hello. All right. Call me back. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Good afternoon, Marianne. Good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Apushu. Mm, fake daddy. Good. Go ahead. Okay. See, I want to talk on power. All Electricity. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, um, honestly, Marianne, it's so sad the way we Nigerians are just accommodating, I mean, certain things in this country without asking questions or fighting for our, our rights. You know, making demands for our rights. Mm -hmm. If you ask, maybe we feel we've been intimidated with uh, maybe uh, uh, force men, you know, security men. Mm -hmm. uh, they will use the army or, you know, all this kind of forces to intimidate people. And we keep shutting our mouth. And so many things are going wrong. You see, we are... Many countries are celebrating 30 years uninterrupted power supply. And in this, our country, we are hardly seeing light. Maybe two, 24 hours in a month to some areas. 36 hours in a month to some areas. Some don't even have light at all. Okay. And at the end of everything, they will come and have the mind to bring bills people to pay. I mean, it's, it's very, very unfortunate. 
This is stealing. Stealing by tricks. Okay. And it's high time we stop this. All right. Thank you, April, for calling. I do appreciate it. I've got to go to the next caller. Hello. Hello, Marianne. Good afternoon. Please turn off your radio. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Ben. I'm calling from Bagada. Go ahead. You see, Marian, this electricity palaver, eh? mm. I think the problem is all around. The government, the disco, and we, the consumers. We are, we are just like uh, uh, this. In anywhere they carry us, keep us, that's where we are. We only continue to complain. Look at somebody is trying to show example of how electricity should be run in Nigeria now. My our family house in Aba, I called them. They told me that geometrics is not going to give you any estimated billing. That they have started mounting prepaid meter in every house by themselves. Going to employ anybody to go to, to go come and knock your door and say bring your bill. No. If you want to use light, you go and buy buy the light. The light you are going to use, you are going to buy it. So there's no cheating. Mm. It's not as if this problem we don't know how to solve it. But everybody is just looking the other way. But, but can I Every ask day. you? Can I ask you? Um, I mean, I mean. I, I, I love what Alex Soti is doing in RBS. I love it because what he's done is to show us that it's doable. It's not like it's rocket science. But what do you think is the problem generally nationwide that we've continued to wallow in darkness? What do you think the, the, the problem is? The problem is corruption. That word on the line is corruption. I don't understand. You mean there's no corruption in RBS? Are you joking? No. The people handling it. Okay. Is it the government of others that's handling it? You really don't understand what I'm saying now. I understand you. Geometrics. That thing belongs to geometrics. The geometrics said, we are not going to come to your house and knock and say, bring bill. No. We're not going to give any bill to you. No. But we're going to give you a prepared meter. Locked there. You buy, you buy, you. But that's, you buy that's the same meter. thing the you NERC know. told us. Years ago, that don't worry, we're bringing the prepaid yeah, meter, we we're going to give it to you, and hand. you use what you use is what you pay for. Here exactly. we are, years later, exactly. Exactly. not everybody exactly. has you it. You can't do it here, that's why I'm telling you, it's corruption. Okay. Then we're paying for darkness here. You and me know the truth, we're paying for darkness. Mm. It's okay. They will bring the bill, whether you use what you don't use, I have to pay. Do you know that in Lagos here? I traveled and I spent six months, they gave me a deal of 300 and something thousand. <laughs> Thank you, for, thank you for calling. I have to take other calls. I appreciate it. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. I'm so sorry. Please call us back. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Ewee. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Makasuman, are you there? All right, do call me back if you can. All right, I'm going to go back to Facebook. Let me go to Facebook quickly and read some messages. I've got about nine minutes on the clock, yeah? Okay, maybe even more. What am I saying? I've got a lot of time on the clock. Okay, let me go to Facebook. Uh, I'm going to read some messages from Facebook. And then, of course, don't forget, you can join me if you are calling us uh, from outside of the country. You can actually join us via Skype. Call Nigeria Info FM on um, Skype. Yes, and you can get through to us to give us your two cents on this particular conversation now anthony aboa here on facebook live says the problem is the sale of generators another angle okay um fumbi Oluwadari, thank you so much i do appreciate it oh daya dada here said daya she be every day i'll be telling you reduce the size of your message you will be sending me templates of a uh, 10 paper how am i supposed to read everything i tell you this every day you will not be listening okay hmm um, Rafael Ifezue here says, um, uh, someone says that, ah, 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 uh, that I'm, that I'm, the person says I have hot temper. Ha, ah, bring ice water for me. Just bring it. Uh -huh. Um, all right. Um, Dio here says, 
Um, your rulers didn't come to power to improve Nigerian lives, but to do vote buying, agbury intimidating, and pocketing institutions. Um, what exactly? You see, th- you send me the same message every day, Dio. If you can tell me what story that you're commenting on, it make it easier. And just you just give me blankets, you know, and then you insult everybody. I understand how bad things are, but your message is just. Ugh, I'm so sorry, Dio. I'm so sorry. Okay, this one says, good afternoon, Mary, and it's painful to know you're being ripped off as a citizen by the same government that ordinarily should prom- should promulgate laws that will protect the citizens. The most enigmatic hydra headed monster in co- is corruption or in corruption is the power sector. This is the one place in the world where people are officially organized to be defrauded. How can people continue to pay for what they never used? Nigeria is indeed uh of all time embarrassment and a big joke to humanity merchant man okay um this one says let them throw anything at us because we talk a lot instead of acting but marianne can you invite any government official and open your f- phone lines for questioning and see if they didn't hear us mama i'm sure we've invited a lot of them and you have called and you've listened to them so when you make these statements i just really wonder what is it amnesia because we've had government officials on this show. Might not be on my show alone, but on different shows. On Morning Crossfire, we've had them on different shows. So when you say these things, I totally understand. Don't get me wrong. I understand that we're going through a very tough time and every one of us is feeling it. But when you make it seem like, oh, you guys are not doing anything. You're not doing your job. We bring them here to, we ask them questions. We might not bring all of them. I mean, we've not been able to bring the Minister of Works here, but we bring government officials on the show. So please. Don't let your anger get in the way, all right? 0201-465-7190. That's 0201-465-7190. Um, and don't forget, you can be part of the conversation via Skype if you're listening to us on our mobile application or on our website. That's www.nigeriainfo.fm or on the Nigeria Info FM mobile application. You can call us via Skype or you can post on our live feed on Twitter. Mm, on, sorry, on <laughs> YouTube. That's Nigeria Info on Twitter. What is happening with Twitter now? <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, yes, on our live feed, you can post your comments there. And on Facebook, I would like to read from you. Twitter people are calling me to come to Twitter so I can see their tweets. I'm here. Someone here says, um, Good afternoon, Marianne. For how long will Third Mainland Bridge be in the news? From National Grid to Third Mainland Bridge, year in, year out, month in, month out. We don't tie our beg. EFCC themselves should start biting from top to bottom. Um, but bet it, um, I'm sure you mean, but I bet, I bet it all these things will die down. Mashud is calling us via Skype. Hello, Mashud. Welcome to the show. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from the UK. All right, Mashud. Mashud, are you moving? Because I can, I can hear like a little bit of wind. Yeah, I'm moving. I'm moving. I just, is it okay for you? Well, there's too much of the wind and it's, 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 it's disturbing us from hearing you. Yes, please call us back. That way we're able to make out what you're saying. Okay, thank you very much for calling us, Mashud. We appreciate it. Still on Twitter. Mm, let me see. Um, oh, my goodness. Let me take this call. I'll come back to Twitter. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Hello. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. Hello. What's your name? Where are you called from? My name is Nika. I'm calling from IJJ. Go ahead. Yes, I think we should we should educate some of our of our, of our fellow fellow citizens. When once once they don't know something about something, they should try and learn. I have a mother who was saying that uh, Tommy language has become a cash cow. In what way, for God's sake? How old is that bridge? You know that that bridge is, 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 is a frame structure built on water. It is we cannot spot that we are having there. Those passports that have been, have been laid on it is to is like, like, like a shock absorber against the concrete floor. And when he, at every meter that the vehicle moves, that, that is what we call vibration that goes around that shock. Mm-hmm. If the bridge collapses now in our eyes, the same people will say government is, a, is, is culpable. They are not with our responsibility. What, what, what's wrong with you? When you we hear anything about money, they need you to say, oh, it's corruption, corruption, corruption. And it's their it's opinion. Like using the money for, we, need, we, need, we need to be educated a, 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 lot, of, a lot more. We, are, we don't know what's wrong with so anything they do. Somebody is saying, you know, even the issue of uh, power. The same Nigerians who are shouting corruption, I don't want to be begging this uh, 
this uh, these school people to take money from them for them to give them that and bypass the media. Well, but then they have a right to because you can't be taking money, but then you don't give light. I'll tell you, for example, in some places they don't see light. The only time they see light is when they are going to come and do mass disconnection. We are, we are, we are, we are culpable, but we allow them. What do you mean by we allow them? Sorry, what do you mean by we allow them? We, we in Nigeria allow this uh, so-called uh, uh, what do you call it, power, 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 and power, and stuff. They will come to your street. They will tell you right to do. The Nigerian will tell you, no, I cannot afford that. Please tell me, what can you do for me? Then the guy will bypass what is on book to be done. Well, that, see, again, I, I, I don't know if you were listening. There was a caller who said something like that, that there are a few people who are culpable, who, are, who bypass meters, who don't want to pay for light. But the huge yes. percentage of Nigerians who outnumber no, those guys... Hold on, that. sir. Hold on. The huge percentage of Nigerians who need light, who need power to do their businesses, to those people are willing to pay for light, but then they don't have light. So can you really single-handedly lump those people with the tiny the percentage of people who steal power and don't pay for it? bad plan. You can see the way people the way, uh, council Bad people planning on whose part? On, 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 our, on our citizens. Well, they are not ready to wait for to, to do the normal thing. What are you talking before about? You, before you energize your house, you need to go to that, that particular station and tell them, ask the social social structure, social social number could be staying there. Give me that. But we mean you, you buy a plot of land. You want them to, you want to be serviced with uh, electricity supply. That means that I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, but I totally disagree with you. Uh, I totally that, disagree. That, that, no, no, no. I totally disagree with you. Yes, there are some that, some parts of the country that are very planned, but there are also parts that have been there for a long time. And they promised yeah. us, hold on, the, N the NERC promised us that, okay, we're going to put a, you know, do away with all the corruption in this sector by bringing prepaid meters. And we're all happy. People were willing we to pay. Know, I know, know so that, many that, people that, who call on this problem. show. Hold on who call on this show to complain that they've gone to pay for prepaid beta and years down the line, they still not received it. Is that, again, poor planning on their part? Because the meters are not enough. Oh God. I, 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 like, I, like how, I, I like how you're holding brief for the NERC and power... power co no, 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 for power companies and the government. It's okay. But who's not being realistic here? Oh my goodness. We are comfortable too. We are, we are both guilty. And I don't think that anyone has said that there are not a group of people yeah, who are not I guilty. Look at the issue of passport. When we are having problems with the issue of passport, but what, what are we having now? Because no matter what things have been done. But well, here we encourage these guys to so do what they like. Okay. That means that they pay a right. amount of money every month for these people. All right. I, I hear I hear you and thank you very much for calling. Uh, I'm letting you go because you've done four minutes. Um so again, those people who, when we go there, the NIMC says is free. We go there and they insist that you pay three thousand naira, and they complain. They go on Nigerian food. They call the NIMC. They send emails. They don't respond. It's poor planning on their part. They're culpable too, Abi. Come on, if the system is rigged against a group of people, it is rigged. And I understand when you say that we're not doing what we need to do. So what's the other thing we need to do to get these people to do right by us? Because different people have called. I paid 5000 I paid 10000 I paid 3000 On the same NIMC that they're saying registration is free. It's the same thing as the meters. Some people will say, oh, the meters are not enough. Why did you come and advertise that you want to give all of us meters, prepaid meters? And then all of a sudden you realize halfway through the project that you don't have enough meters. Poor planning on whose part again? I don't have the time for this. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Turn off your radio, please. I want to come out there with my sister. Good afternoon. Yes. The market woman, they talk. Oh, I work. Work is fine. No, go ahead. Maybe I address you. I address you. I address you. Ah, wait till they the talk now. Now, never be their name. I'll be waiting till they call them. Well, it's not necessarily them. Well, the midstream downstream why, petroleum why agency. Increase, increase what now? Ah, we sleep too much, oh. We sleep when well, they sleep for this country. We just go stop safe. For these people to just they do us like this. Eh? Maybe I'm at the vessel. Calm down. I don't like all the way that they treat us at all. 
Eh? Now, now I said that time, if not be God, there eh, one nepa, he two legs for Komoto. Well, well, maybe you're part of the problem. Maybe you're the ones that don't want to pay bill and you're costing them to. Oh, what did they talk? What did they talk, Seth? Me and you will pay people. <laughs> me and you, maybe I'm. Maybe, I'm you're, maybe you're one of those what? people that the co- last caller was talking one, about. No, not just talk that one. I will vest for you. <laughs> you, not to say never be. Don't use me. Don't compare yourself at all. No, but you that's what that's what the last caller was saying that there are a group of people that are not paying. Every day, mm. you know. This thing is too much for this control. So, 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 let me ask you, Maka woman, let me use you as, as an example. Um, when mm. when they don't give you light and then they mm. bring meter, I'm um, sorry, they bring a bill for you, an estimated bill. What do you do? See, you that problem is my husband. I told him to remove, get to remove all the wire that we don't need that nepa again. In our house, because the money we spend for food is just too much. But you don't want to listen to me. If it's where me, I will not use that light again. But that's not a solution, that is, is it? It's, that's because not a solution. Because the thing is too much now. <sighs> but you see pain. Oh. Uh-uh. Oh. As the actual woman, no. Okay. Cool. Calm down. Take oh, it easy. Oh. Just breathe. Thank you very much for calling. I know how... It's crazy, right? For example, I know of people who have said, look, we we want prepaid meters. We've got to write for the prepaid meters. But they have not come. And we continuously get estimated billing. And then we keep saying, you don't even give us light, but we're paying 10000 8000 at the end of the month without light. And they can count how many times they've seen light. But what are you doing as a community, as a street, as an area? What are you doing? Because it looks like we're just complaining, complaining. We're tired of these people complain. Just like that caller said, you, will, you are all part of the problem. Are you part of the problem? Or do you want to be part of the solution? And what is that solution that we must get? Because, it, I, like I said, I've told you, I lived in Uganda. In Uganda, if Nepal wants to take light, well, the power holding company there, they send a text and they'll tell you from what hours to what hours the light will be off. And why? And when the light will come back. And that doesn't happen every other day. And that's a country that you look down on and say, mm, it's my country. But your country, no 24 hours light. And we're trying to do what? Anyway, I've got to go. <laughs> the news is coming at the top of the hour. And on the other side of the clock, let's complain more. <laughs> but let's talk about what's happening in your community. Someone says, thankfully, I enjoy average of 18 hours lights daily. And my f- 5K subscription last one lasts for one week. And we're using... And we are two using one meter. Okay, so combined, we spend 20K per month. And that's the least uh, we can get 18, at least we get 18 hours of power supply daily. McDonald from Yanoba. Well, lucky you, man. Maybe we should start moving our things to Yanoba. What do you guys think? Well, that's it on uh, the <laughs> big three uh, segments of the show. When we come back on the other side, it's Community U Report. Stay with us. Conversations. Where else can you get it? <laughs> then, the station best in talk. That's why education is the main thing. Once you kill education, you can control the people. Africans just like to blame things. It's our constitution, ban military from intervention in the government. Yeah, if you want to destroy any country, kill the education. It's as simple as that. Former terrorists who are undergoing rehabilitation are now saying that the government's promise to pay them 30000 has failed. And for that reason, they are on the streets protesting. Possession doesn't win you match it round. No, but if they can't hold on to the board, they cannot score. Another thing, again, is our officiating, especially in the league. Why is it that Nigerian referees are not selected for calf tournaments or calf matches? 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio.